There's an old adage in professional networking, no one ever got fired for buying Cisco. And while that may be true, I've made a lot of money in my career being paid to rip it out of places. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. Gigabit networking, first established as a standard in 1999, it served as the backbone for server racks and home networks alike for the better part of two decades. It's been so ubiquitous and inexpensive that since 2010, it's been the de facto standard of speed to basically every network connected device. But I think the time has finally come to kick Gigabit aside and start looking to the future, especially when it comes to servers, small business installations, and even home labs. It's time for 10 Gigabit to rise up and carry the torch, delivering high-speed interconnect to every server that you own. And as luck would have it, that's exactly what we're gonna talk about today. Before we get into it, this video is sponsored by QSFP Tech, and we'll be taking a look at a couple new switches to show off exactly that, 10 gigabit networking speed for everyone. Unlike a review, this video will demonstrate how QSFP Tech can fit into your network plan or upgrade your existing network. QSFP Tech did send out the network switches used in this video, but they will be going back once the video is complete. As far as getting paid, it's shill mode confirmed, and now my family can eat for another week. <laughs> Now, this might come as a bit of a surprise, but unless an organization has done a complete infrastructure update in the last, I'd say, three to five years, they're likely still going to be on gigabit networking. Switches are one of the last things to be upgraded, as they have a tendency to just work, with servers getting most of the upgrade attention. I still take the odd contract job for server and network installations, and both of the clients that I talked to last month were either on Sandy Bridge or Haswell-based servers and had nothing but one gigabit links present in either network. Now, that's anecdotal evidence at best, but I've been doing professional IT work for a long time, and finding 10 gigabit or faster in the wild for companies with less than $200,000 annual IT budgets is basically impossible. This is especially true of small and medium-sized businesses, with maybe half a dozen servers on location. The price to install anything faster than Gigabit was astronomical just a few short years ago. Today, we're going to take a look at a switch from QSFP Tech for around $1,000 that can either replace or augment your existing network, as well as some features that might make it worth making that jump. On top here is the QSFP Tech S7300 24X2C, what QSFP Tech calls a campus switch, with 24 10 gigabit SFP Plus ports. This is a top of rack switch designed specifically for high performance computing, data center rack interconnect, or as their description states, a campus distribution switch. Hardware wise, we're looking at a total switching capacity of 800 gigabit per second and support for 32,000 MAC addresses in cache. That last part is particularly important, as I've worked with client direct drop switches and even top of rack switches within the last five years with support for as little as 2,000 total MAC addresses. That might have made sense before Wi-Fi was needed literally everywhere in an infrastructure plan, but less so today when every employee walking through the door brings in three wireless devices on their own, plus every fridge, camera, conference phone, tablet, and access control device on your property requiring a wireless link. So. Why am I excited about a $1,000 24-port switch that can do 10 gigabit? Haven't I already done videos before on switches costing half as much that basically do the same thing? Well, yes, but the S7300 24X2C is also looking ahead with dual 100 gigabit QSFP28 ports. These can be used for WAN connectivity, linking buildings together with 100 gig links, or even stacking multiple S7300 switches together. You can stack up to eight S7300s together, allowing them to act as a single unit, and in some cases, simplifying management, as the entire stack is aware of configurations of each individual port and switch. But enough about the hardware, let's actually get the switch up and running. Now, I made a joke about Cisco being literally everywhere in the intro of this video. But for those who have worked with Cisco switches in the past, the CLI interface will make you feel right at home. You get all the benefits of not having to relearn terminology or commands, all while being allowed to forget how to update subscription licenses because these switches aren't going to need any. Initial configuration on the switch is performed via a direct serial console. So stop me if you've seen one of these cables before. Uh, the RJ45 end goes right into the bottom of the switch and connects via serial to your laptop or desktop if you're being really weird about it. 
Uh, by the way, if you're the kind of person who carries a serial cable in your bag, get with the times and get one of these USB-C ones. I'll have a link down in the video description. Once you have the switch set up, you can also enable SSH or access the web GUI for remote connections. The S7300 runs on Linux based on VXWorks. So again, network vets from the likes of Cisco, Dell, HP Procurve, and the like should be more than comfortable enough diving in with the command line. For instance, creating a VLAN is as easy as navigating to config, then typing in VLAN and the number. Just like those other switch environments, a virtual LAN is considered an interface. Connecting to interface VLAN 101, we can set up an IP address and subnet that will be used on that VLAN. After that, it's as easy as setting up our trunk to connect to a router or core switch and access ports to connect to downstream clients. Of course, don't forget to write your changes. Just like most network switches, your running configuration is held in cache until you tell it to permanently save it. For data center use, or as a top of rack switch, the S7300 24X2C provides 24 10 gigabit SFP plus ports for servers and dual 100 gig QSFP 28s for getting all of that data out of your rack. And with an 800 gigabit switching capacity, you're not gonna be worried about pesky things like layer three slowing down your overall transfer rates. But there's one other switch that QSFP Tech wanted me to show off today, and it's one I actually don't have the capability to properly test. No, it's not because my network can't generate enough bandwidth. It's actually because the use case is very specific to its niche. While everyone can get excited over the prospect of a 24 port 10 gigabit switch with 100 gigabit backbones, this underneath it is the S5300 24S 8T6X. And it's a product that you as a viewer are either going to scratch your head questioning its sheer existence or buy 30 of before this video ends. The specs on it do seem rather pedestrian with six 10 gigabit SFP plus ports, eight one gigabit RJ45s, but it's the 24 one gigabit SFP ports that might get your attention. Well, that and the price. While I did spend the last eight minutes of this video telling you that gigabit was dead and long live 10 gig connectivity, that's far from the case for internet service providers. And full duplex one gigabit fiber is what nearly every customer is asking for right now. This S5300 is an $800 switch that offers 24 ports of fiber connectivity, essentially making it a municipal ISP in a box. And while no one has ever been fired for buying Cisco, I think this switch is going to challenge that phrase. First, some basic specs. The S5300 has a total switching capacity of 184 gigabit per second, and even more impressively, requires just 75 watts of power to do it. That means for less power than Jeff Geerling's Raspberry Pi cluster, you can provide symmetrical gigabit fiber internet to 24 customers in a 10 kilometer radius, all of them with direct lit drops. A similar hardware configuration from Cisco would be the Catalyst C9300 24SA, which will run you around $11,052 just for the base 24 port SFP switch. To bring it up to feature parity with the S5300, you can add in modules like an eight port SFP plus card for $995 or a second power supply for 539, both of which the S5300 already includes. And while the Cisco at least has the courtesy of being 13% faster with 208 gigabit per second switching performance, you can buy a full 15 S5300 24S 8T6X switches for the price of a single C9300. For years, I've known about QSFP Tech for probably the same reason you all do, as a transceiver company, making fiber modules and DAC cables for enterprise switches for literally pennies on the dollar of their first party counterparts. My home network rack is full of their cables and fiber optics, and it's why I was happy to accept the sponsorship and share some of their switch lineup with you in this video. Now, they sent me over the pair of switches for me to take a look at, but there's a solid product stack over on their website with everything from low power client switches with 10 gig backhauls, all the way out to full on data center distribution switches with 40 and 100 gigabit networking. A huge thanks again to QSFP Tech for sponsoring today's video. If you're interested in the S7300 24X2C or the X5300 24S 8T6X, or just need cables and fiber modules for your existing network switches, make sure to follow the links down to QSFP Tech's website in the video description. And for making it all the way through the video, QSFP Tech will include a free pair of 10 gig short range modules and an OM3 patch cable of up to 10 meters if you include the Notecraft computing in your next order. On your way down there, don't forget to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. 
Follow me on the social medias, at Craft Computing. And if you like the content you see on this channel and want to help support me in what I do, consider going over to craftcomputing.store, grabbing one of our nucleated pint glasses, and keeping your beer fresh the entire time you're drinking it. That's going to do it for me in this video. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next one. Cheers, everyone. Oh, that one is so good. Beer for today is from Dinkasi Brewing down in Eugene, Oregon. It is the Eclipsosaurus Celestial IPA, clocking in at 7.2%. I can smell the pineapple from here. Seriously. <laughs> wow. Boy, I hope this one lives up to the aromatic expectations I've already built up for it. One thing's for sure, it looks really good in that pint glass. That is like a really, really good rum punch fruit cocktail. <laughs> it's the best way I can describe that. It's got a little bit of of just like a, a raw alcohol bite. Just a little bit. Um, but what I was alluding to, that aroma, the aromatics, they are not disappointing on this one. That is just straight up pineapple, orange, guava, passion fruit, if this was served to me as a tiki punch in a bar, I would not be disappointed.